Right now we have uh, Pastor Kevin Sepulveda. If you want to uh, get him uh, going here. Hey, Pastor, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay, oh, where are we where are we talking to him from, Paul? Uh, Australia. I mean, like, our, what what are we using here? I know. Uh, the computer. Yeah, you can't see us, but we can see you. I, I can't see him. Well, you can't see me. Well, let I'm me on, go to him. Let me go to him. Let me go to him. So you can't see us now. Everybody knows they can put the the face to the name. Yeah. There Good you to go. see you. It looks like you're right side up. <laughs> I don't get that joke. Can you please explain that joke? No, if you're, however old you are, if you don't get that joke, you're just going to have to live the rest of your life. In, in... He said that joke to me well, earlier. Australia's, I don't know. Considered, Australia's considered down under. Oh, good night. Yeah, I did not get that joke. Wow. Right over my right. head. Well, right over my head. Just to clarify, you guys can see me. You can, you can hear me. I just I can hear you guys, but I can't see you. Yes. Is that right? Yes. I can hear you perfect. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Talk to yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I guess you want to know what's going on here in Australia um, and the effects that it's probably having on, on churches, on my church and other churches alike. Well, our, our prime minister came out with an announcement on Sunday night, uh, basically uh, banning church gatherings. Uh, and of course, it wasn't just uh, targeting churches, but it was targeting things like pubs and clubs. You know, that's that's a great thing that, you know, some of these pubs and clubs are, are being closed, being forcibly closed. So that's a positive uh, but I didn't receive the message properly. I had the impression that churches could continue to meet so long as there was a uh, minimum uh, congregation and people were spaced out uh, one person per four square, uh, four square meters. So that's two meters per person. And so I had started to make plans of, you know, um, having multiple services because obviously we wouldn't be able to um, have every member attend our church services. Now, thankfully, you know, for us, you know, I don't have the pr uh, problem that Pastor Jimenez has with 200 people. You know, our church here, if we have everybody here, um, it's about 48 of us or about 50 people. And so my, my idea was basically to space out the different um, congregations and go from three services to six services and basically just uh, have, have a rotation of members coming through and meeting. So that was my plan. That's what I was hoping for, only to then uh, be clarified by another pastor, a friend of mine here, that say, no, it's actually, you know, churches are completely banned. I had to go and clarify that with our local government office. And yeah, you know, the, the restriction for one person for every square me four square meters was for funerals and weddings. I but no, no, just funerals, funerals. And so, um, yeah, that's the case right now. I, you can see I'm probably dre I'm dressed up now with my with my suit and my collared shirt. That's because I've, I'm planning on preaching very shortly to myself. And getting that pre-recorded onto YouTube, so then that way uh, our church members can hear some preaching, <laughs> you know, via YouTube. What time is it there for you? Um, it is 11 a.m. here okay. on on Friday morning. It's Friday morning, 11 a.m. But um, I don't have the resources here to go live streaming. I know some other churches and pastors are doing that. I don't. I don't. We don't have a, a, a you know a good broadband connection here. We just use the 4G um, Wi-Fi network, just your standard uh, cellular or mobile network. So I, I didn't want to go live streaming because the quality doesn't look that great. Um, I was listening to some preaching that was done via live streaming via Facebook, and quite often the audio and video was not in sync, or the preacher was being uh, was cutting in and out. You know, um, so I decided now let's just maintain a good quality video, good quality audio. I'll just pre-record my sermons and get them released on schedule, like scheduled released um, during our normal church times. So you're at New Life Baptist Church, right? New Life Baptist Church, Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Uh, my family uh, moved from Sydney. That's where we we're originally from. It's about a thousand kilometers south. Uh, you guys have to work out what that is in miles. Um, south, we, we moved up, you know, to start this church. And, and you know, we've, we've the you know, with a mandate of banning churches, I'm, I'm I'm personally a bit frustrated because my purpose of being up here on the Sunshine Coast is for church. And if I can't have church, you know, it's it's very frustrating. But at the same time, I'm trying to, you know, remain positive. I'm trying to keep our church members positive minded as well. Um, I know it's very frustrating to not be able to gather together with your like minded believers, sing, you know, sing praises unto the Lord. Um, he, you know, preaching from from your preacher, you know, live, you know, together you know church is not the same i think if you're doing that on a computer screen at home but it's the best that we can do at this point in time 
And, um, you know, our, our church, our church members, there's been a mix of reactions. Some have taken the, you know, decision to quarantine themselves earlier than what was mandated by the government. Um, some have done that just, uh, you know, number, yeah, to protect themselves. Yes. But also they keep in mind the other members in the church. They don't, you know, in case they get sick, they don't want to pass that on to others. So, you know, even though we've had some people not attend church services, I know they're doing it for the right reasons. You know, they're, they're trying to be mindful of others. And um, then we've had some others who are elderly or maybe have chronic sicknesses that have um, not attended church. But now nobody's attending church. So <laughs> how about soul <laughs> winning? Just, uh, you know, so, well, that's the question. We're not sure. I do have some people going soul winning over the last couple of days. Um, I had planned to go out today and do some soul winning. But we did do some soul winning on Sunday, uh, last Sunday, and there was a noticeable difference I found by the people at home. You know, obviously, people already don't like you going door to door soul winning. They don't like that message. They don't like you coming and bothering their private, bothering them. They think you know in the private homes. But I noticed a further resistance as we were going. We could definitely, we definitely knew people were home. They just weren't coming, opening their doors. Some people um, just sort of made mention of the fact that. There's a virus out there and that we shouldn't be doing these things. So there is a resistance from the general community here um, with people going door to door. So, look, I, I'm not sure. You know, I, my plan is to continue soul winning for now. I, you know, I've not told my church members to stop doing that. Um, and I guess we'll have to see, you know, what further instruction or mandates have been passed down by our local prime minister and by the health department here. Um, they are difficult decisions to make, and I, I know some decisions I've made have not always been popular with our church members. Uh, but um, you know, as far as the church goes, you know, I'm I, ha I hold I hold the office of the bishop here. I'm the pastor. I have to make those decisions. You know, I have to be accountable to God for these things. I have to have a clear conscience before God. And so, as long as I'm considering those things in mind, you know, I do believe we're we're taking the right approaches here. I do believe we should obey the government officials at this point in time, at least, um, with uh, the decisions they've made at this point in time, at least. And um, we'll see what, what goes forward. I mean, th there's been changes almost on a daily basis, it, it feels. So things are changing very quickly here. Um, so, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Are you, are you paying attention to the news and what your leaders are saying in your country there? I am paying attention to some extent. I'm usually hearing from my church members first. <laughs> They're usually passing on the information to me, and then I'm looking into it. I'm trying to stay away from the media. Um, obviously, their purpose is to scaremonger people. I mean, they operate on ratings. It's a TV show. They've got their advertisements that they need to broadcast. So, you know, obviously, just like any other television show, they try to keep you on the edge of your seat. They tr try to keep you coming back for more. Um, whereas I've just noticed if you just go and get the official information just a little bit, maybe a few minutes every day, you'll be up to speed with everybody else. Um, so at the end of the day, I don't think everyone's got all the information. I don't, I don't believe the media is necessarily portraying, you know, um, the most accurate information either. When you go on, on online, when you go on the internet, there are different reports, different graphs, different statistics, all pointing one way or another. And I just realized, you know what, I'm not going to worry myself too much about these things. I'm just going to, I guess, roll the punches as best as I can and just react with the the mandates that have been passed down. And um, obviously going to the Lord God, first and foremost, for wisdom, for guidance, for instruction, for comfort as well. And um, just trying to set a good example as a pastor to the church. You know, the church here on the Sunshine Coast isn't the only church I pastor. We do have a church down in Sydney which was a satellite church. It's called Blessed Hope Baptist Church, but now it's its own independent church. But I'm still the pastor, and I would uh, fly down there once a week, or almost once a week now, um, uh, to run midweek services there. We have another. We have a few other men that preach uh, for the Sunday services. Um, and unfortunately, I my, my flights have been restricted. I can't fly down to, to Sydney. In fact, uh, one of the most recent changes made here in Australia is that our borders, our, our state borders are being closed. Um, so I'm not sure what kind of restrictions that, you know, people are having to cross borders. I know if you are crossing into, into Queensland, which is a state that I'm in, um, you've got to self quarantine for 14 days. So it's not just international, uh, visitors, it's state visitors as well. Interstate visitors come and they've got to quarantine themselves for 14 days. So again, that's another frustration that I personally have. Um, 
And, you know, this, I pass on the same instruction to the church in Sydney uh, that they we cannot meet for services right now. Um, now, obviously, for some people, this is difficult for them. Um, you know, they, they believe that uh, they need to continue meeting. And, you know, I've just told the church members, listen, at the end of the day, what, what people want to do in their own homes, that's up to them. You know, every every father, every husband is the head of their house and they've got to make the right decisions for themselves and their families. You know, if they don't agree with the decision, decision that I've made with the churches, well, that's it's not stopping them from meeting in their own homes. Uh, though the government is trying to pass further, further restrictions on meeting in your own homes. So if people want to have prayer meetings, if they want to gather together, listen to the preaching, you know, that's up to them. But they also have to, uh, you know, take into consideration the risks, count the costs that might come their way. So I'm, I'm not sure what they all are. You know, at the end of the day, we're, we're trusting God. You know, every every person has to do what's right, have that clear conscience before God. And so, you know, I, I encourage, you know, people to, you know, even if they disagree with my decision, that they have, they are personally accountable to God themselves, and they need to do what's right in their in their eyes. Correct. Amen. Now, um, I didn't ask Pastor Jimenez. I kind of wanted to ask Pastor Jimenez, Jimenez this question, but I'm going to ask you this question. So, um, you know, a good leader clearly makes decisions based on the evidence put in front of them, and uh, you know, not on speculation. It's not really good to, but what. She, but what a what a good leader will do also would would maybe be able to entertain a thought and and consider like what would they be willing to do right or where is the line for them and uh, to kind of know that in advance going ahead and and so right now it's it's not lawful for in many of these areas not to assemble in a church and there's the reason given bottom line the reason given is because of this contagion that is uh, putting people's lives at risk. Now, whether that is a justified um, reason, whether we think that, well, are we going to just stop going to church because of a small chance of something happening? But at, at what point, like how far down the road? What if, what if the lives, the li the, what if it just, this is what people consider. Now, that we, you just have to cross the bridge when you get there. But say, say the death toll pretty much levels off, and it just doesn't seem to be um, the Black Death, you know, which, which some people imagine it could end up being, right? But say it just it just levels off, and they just kind of keep things in place where they don't allow people to uh, assemble, or, or because in the end we know that there will be something that uh, prevents. Christians from gathering together and that will become illegal to to be Christian or that they will it will be outlawed at some point in the end so we know that um that that's going to come at some point in time but if that came a little bit more uh under the radar than just straight out like so people wonder like well if, if this doesn't pass if this doesn't blow over and this could be the like everybody's expecting it to be like later on but they just make it I'm I'm just speculating, right? And this is just speculation. But where is it for you? What, what, when do you think it be, is enough, or what would what would somebody do, or as a leader, um, with their people? Would you? What would you do? Yeah. Well, thanks for giving me the hard question. Can we just uh, can we just ring up Pastor Jimenez and see what he says? <laughs> no, look, at the end of the day, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have thought about this, of course, and um, you know the. We don't know how long this might go on. You know, this might be, you know, this might go on for several weeks, several months. This could go on for a year, a year and a half. I don't know how long these restrictions last. And I think um, the way I have considered this, and this this is my, my process of thoughts, um, my process of thought when it comes to different authorities, institutions, and I teach on this quite heavily in my church, is that, you know, God has allowed certain institutions to exist and of course that first institution is the family home and in it in, in each institution there's a head and there are people that are to be in obedience or to follow that head and in the family that's the father that's the husband in the church that's the pastor and the, and the, the members are expected to uh, be in obedience to that authority within the church structure then we also have government and, you know, God did institute government. You know, I know we, we look at our governments and we know how corrupt they are. We know how ungodly and how, uh, you know, that the, the laws they pass just seem to be more unbiblical as the time goes on. 
but at the end of the day, that you know, the, the government is is has certain powers that God has given them. And in this scenario, when it comes to uh, disease or viruses and, and quarantine, government, you know, God did give the government that authority. You know, it is found in the in the in the law of Moses in Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, so how priests were required to shut people in that were uh, potential contagious, you know, leprosy or you know have have diseases like that, and so. At this point in time, and I don't know exactly, you know, I won't be able to answer this question fully, but I'm willing to give the government that authority that God has already given them. Like it's not, it's not my job to give them that authority, but to honor that authority that God has given them, I'm, I'm willing to give them that um, power at this point in time. And so, if they are being deceptive, if if they are, you know, um, doing things that are ungodly. And let's say this virus is, is nothing. Let's say it is just a, an attempt for them to gain power, an attempt to flex their muscles against churches. Well, then I'll be praying that God will bring swift judgment upon those politicians, upon that government, because at the end of the day, it's their decision to do that. And I believe it is my responsibility to um, honor that that power that God has given them. So, for example, I've, just, I've got a passage here in... Um, we just read it here. It says in Titus chapter 3, verse 1, and of course, Titus was a pastor, and this is the instruction that the Apostle Paul gave to Titus, and this is what his Titus is expected to teach his church. It says, put them in mind, and this is Titus chapter 3, verse 1, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. And so I'm trying to show meekness. I'm trying to be gentle and not to be a brawler toward the government with this decision when it comes to quarantine and banning churches, because I do believe this is something that they do have the authority over. And, um, you know, how long do we wait until we open up our churches? I'm going to leave that right now in the hands of our government. Now, if this is indefinite, if this goes on forever, well, I'm already praying that God will, you know, change the hearts and minds of these, these people in authority and that if their hearts are hardened against God, I'm already praying that God will take them out, that God will wipe them out, and God will bring in proper authorities that would then lift these restrictions, you know, if this is nothing but a power grab. Um, but, you know, right now I'm going to give the government the benefit of the doubt. You know, I, I, I hope they are doing this to prevent the spread of disease. Um, that, you know, I'm trying to, you know, be positive-minded in that sense. And so... That's what I feel about it right now. You know, I do not believe that God will judge me as a pastor for making this decision of, of uh, closing our doors at this point in time because that it is a power that God has given to the government. So those authorities are accountable to God for what they decide to do. That is a good answer. I like that one. That was, that was good. I'm glad that you went there because that's something that uh, people need to hear as Christians also is, um, you know, that— if if we're right in our heart, we're doing what we should with the according to the scriptures, um, according to the truth, then you know God will see that, and that's where why why we have faith in Him because we know that He's a just God, and we'd rather put our hands our fate in His hands than in uh, the hands of men, and because we know that men are wicked and the rulers um, will uh, definitely ultimately come after um, the the Lord and His anointed, right? So. Um, Sure. Yeah. Did you have anything that I missed, Brother Paul? No, I mean, that's it, really. I really appreciate you, pa Pastor, coming on and talking with us. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to say? No, I just thought maybe I'll share some stats with you very quickly. Um, so right now in Australia, as of today, there's been 2,985 confirmed cases of people with the coronavirus. And our population is very different compared to yours, of course. We're only about 25 and a half million people in Australia. So as a percentage, that comes to 0.01% of our population with this virus. So, I mean, it's, it's, a very, it's a very small percentage. And, you know, I'm not putting too much faith in these numbers with these stats. I, I know I've seen a lot of stats that, you know, that compare the coronavirus with uh, your seasonal flu, for example. Uh, though I think it, it's it's good to look at some numbers and, and stats, but at the end of the day, the reason we can trust the um, the numbers on with the seasonal flu is because it's something that we're used to. It's something that we have 
every year. I'm pretty sure I come down with that with a flu every year. My entire family does, I and mean, we, we've got 10 kids. So you know, usually there's one kid with with flu every year. So this is something that you know you can look at over a number of years, and you can have some consistent data. But when it comes to this coronavirus, at the end of the day, it's you know we're going off this data. We're not even sure how accurate these are. You know, is China really? given us their correct numbers? Is Iran really passing on their numbers properly? You know, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have any faith in these numbers is what I'm trying to say. So I'm not trying to make any decisions based on the graphs and the stats that we see. I'm having to make a decision on what the government authorities are saying and sort of making, you know, responding to that with the best way possible. Uh, you know, but I, I do want to end on this if I can. And, you know, it's, it's James chapter one, verse two. And you know, I'm even though I'm frustrated, I'm actually very excited. You know, I'm I'm excited for, uh, uh, for the for the fear, as well because, you know, I have said this many times in Australia is that Australia Australians do not have a fear of God. You know, the average Australian, we live in a very you know it's called the lucky country. It's a very you know uh, blessed with with finances and resources, and generally speaking, no one really suffers in Australia, uh, in comparison at least to the rest of the world. And so generally speaking, people do not have a fear of God, whereas, you know, you guys, I'm sure, have heard about the fires that ravaged Australia in previous uh, months. And now we have this coronavirus. And what I believe what I'm seeing is that people are finally waking up and saying, hey, you know, life can be short. You know, life is precious. You know, I believe people are wanting to get right with God. And, you know, maybe the, the fear of God is returning to the nation and so I'm excited about that response, uh, that the fear of God is returning to the hearts and minds of Australians. But I'm also excited for, for believers, because I, I think this is a great time for us to um, make some self-examination. You know, how are we, are we responding to this? Are we fearful? Are we fearing God? You know, are we going to the Lord in prayer? Are we, are we opening our Bibles, you know, more, more than we have before? I think it's a great time to say, hey, how are we responding to this? And if I could just end with James chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible reads, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. The Bible says, count it all joy. Hey, we need to be excited. We need to be happy that God is allowing us to go through these trials. And it says in verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So as believers, we need to take the opportunity that God has given us to allow God to test us, test our faith. You know, go to the Lord, maybe more than you ever had before. Go in prayer, confess your sins, read your Bible. If you've not read your Bible, hey, you're probably quarantined at home. You've got more time at home. It's not time to turn on the Netflix. It's time to open your, the Word of God, read that Bible cover to cover, and let the trine of your faith work that patience, you know, being perfect, being complete. You know, God wants to do a great work in us. And, yeah, so don't let this opportunity pass you by. Let God, you know, let God use this opportunity to work in you so you can be stronger in the faith. Amen. That was a great passage as well. So I, I, I really appreciate you for just bringing us back to that reminder that that uh, the government has been given the power by God's judgment, that God has put those rulers in place according to his plan and to the hearts of the people. And so that's including us as well. And there's a lot of wicked people around us that that um, that need to be saved. And there's there's lost people out there who who want to be saved, even even if if the outward appearance of our nation nations is that people don't care about God. There are people interwoven among the people who will be saved, and so let's let's just trust the Lord that that even though there are elements that we don't necessarily trust because they they're not Christians, our leaders are not professing, they're not quoting Scripture. So, but God has put them in a place, and God can bless us, and God can bless anybody even though they're in that position. So it's a, it's a good reminder to trust in the Lord in this matter. And even if, even if everybody, even if it's a, we're going to get into it tomorrow, but even if it's a total wicked plot to, uh, to move forward the jet devil's agenda and they're, they're manipulating the numbers and manipulating the, um, the media. And, and even if that's the case, like our job is not to, to take it to them. And our, our, our job is, is what the pastors would have us to do. And so I'm so glad that the pastors that we've spoken to, um, they're aware at different levels or they'll speak on different levels of, of what, 
what people are thinking about with this this could be a power play and what could be coming against our rights but they're coming back to the scriptures they're letting us know our place keeping us humble and helping us to remember uh, what God would have us to do and that's going to save lives forget the you know washing of your hands like what's going to save lives is the fact that we're going to be in the will of God and thank thank God for pastors like you who help keep people uh, at the right size in this matter thank you God bless you Amen. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pastor. Have a good one.